There's a new Levo SL. But what was wrong with the old bike, you might well ask, because many people spend lots of money on that bike. Maybe a better question is what was right with it. Welcome to springtime in Wales for a full rundown of the all new Turbo Levo SL. What's different and is it better? I don't necessarily agree with the whole mountain bike comparison, but to quote specialized on the Levo SL that this bike redefines the modern mountain bike experience, I don't actually disagree with that because let's face it, mountain biking is a game of percentages, which I'll come on to in a bit. However, the original SL was a slimline trail flying machine laced with great detail. The integration of the remote, the display, the Mission Control app was pioneering. It had an all new motor, slimline battery, a range extender low down in the frame, which added 50% to the range and not too much on the cost. Now all, well, maybe some of those things still exist. I mean, let's face it, it's still a Levo SL in terms of its silhouette. Except, well, if you think about it, it's got a little bit more travel. It's got fully adjustable geometry. You can now have whatever rear wheel size you want. And of course, it's got that very cool new TCU on it. And also, wait for it, a quieter. Yes, those are just the stones you can hear. More powerful, new motor. Vroom. And there's more. In fact, there's a ton more, which I'm sure you guys will want to know all about right now. Now, what do they say about the old SL? Uh, it's so light, you'll forget it's electric. I can assure you something, you will not forget it's electric coming up a bank like that. First thing I want to tackle is the motor, the new SL 1.2. As I mentioned earlier, it's gone from 35 Newton meters up to 50 Newton meters and a peak power from 240 up to 320 watts. That's a 25% increase. There is more travel on this bike. It's now 150, 160. There is more adjustability too. I'm sure you guys are thinking, hmm, more weight? Not at all. This bike is now in size S4, 17.4 kilos, even with my pedals on it. The motor casing is a new two-piece honeycomb design. There's a new gearbox, it's super quiet. There's a change to the sizing on the new bikes. There's now a little bit more room for everybody and they've switched from the old small to extra large system up to the specialized S system, S1 to S6. Next up, adjustability. Now remember the old bike had a flip chip where you could change the bottom bracket height. This one has now got headset cups to change the head tube angle. You've got a flip chip in the shock to change the bottom bracket again and one in the chain stay to change the wheel size. So as you can imagine with the wheel size options, the adjustability and the new motor, it's a very different bike. So what does all this mean? Well, this bike now has the ability to be longer, slacker and lower with a little bit more reach. It has a steeper seat tube angle for climbing and a longer chainstay in the 29 inch wheel size. In fact, this bike can be many bikes. There's definitely a bit more grit about this SL, making it potentially a better all-round mountain bike. And with Specialized saying there's a more efficient e-bike system on this bike, that means they've kept the existing battery and range extender, which is great for places like this. Now, possibly one of the biggest changes to the new SL is a change to the leverage rate. There's now more support off the top, and more control at the bottom out. 
definitely a different feeling bike. Whoa, would you look at that? Now remember, the SL will come in a range of price points and specifications, but one thing in common is they've actually removed this piece of the structure of the frame in that area there. New linkage, as I mentioned, there's a new shock on this bike. We've got 30 mil rims, four piston brakes. Now this bike really needs it because it's a flying machine. We've got all new TCU, Mastermind TCU. That's a fantastic bit of technology. You can connect to the Mission Control app. You can adjust the bike. You can pretty much do anything you want with it. Oh, and there's a new derailleur on this bike too. Day two and chapter two in the story of the new SL. Now having covered the fine detail of this bike, I think there is a bigger picture story which people who are new to e-mountain bikes might want to explore. Some of you might be thinking this bike is actually quite close to the Levo. Same adjustability, same travel and familiar geometry, but this bike should be looked at in its own right, not in the shadow of the Levo. So why is that? Well, let's get something very clear. This bike does not handle or perform like a regular trail bike, as some people have said about the previous Levo SL, or indeed as some brands are trying to sell these lower power EMTBs. It's an interesting comparison, yes, but it's a very different game to mountain biking. Let's return to those percentages. Now the first percentage to look at is one of time. Now in a typical one hour ride on a mountain bike, you'll probably be spending 85% of your time climbing and 15 descending. On an e-mountain bike, on the other hand, that's more likely gonna be around about 70% climbing. Let's put that into some real numbers. Now on a mountain bike, you're quite likely in that same hour to do three climbs, three descents. On an e-bike like the Levo SL, you're more likely to be doing around about four to five. So a lot more riding in the same space of time. Now the second one is all about handling. A lot of people say that lightweight EMTBs are as nimble as mountain bikes. Now let's get something straight. Mountain bikes are not nimble uphill at all. And when a big percentage of your time is spent climbing, whether that be on a mountain bike or on a lightweight EMTB, then why shouldn't nimbleness be an uphill thing as well as a downhill thing? So what I'm saying is that a lightweight EMTB like the Levo SL is a lot more nimble uphill. And when it comes to the downhill, which we'll talk about a bit later, you'll find the increased weight a little bit more planted. On the descents, a bike like the Levo SL is a couple of kilos heavier than a mountain bike. So that's gonna to lead to a bike which is more stable, less nervous, which in turn leads to more grip and more control. And on the subject of descending, ask yourselves this question, is descending uh, technically, physically, and mentally as demanding as climbing? Because on one of these bikes, you're gonna be doing a lot of it. And remember, the SL has got the Mission Control app, which is connected to the Mastermind TCU, where you can get lots of information, such as the watts per kilometer, route planning, and also recover data from your ride, both in terms of what the motor's been doing, what the battery's used, and how you've performed. So to return to the question of power and does it matter? Well, yes and no. So this bike has got more power than the old SL. Some people will say, great. Others will be like, so what? And others will be more interested in the Levo or the Canevo. Are any of those better than the other? Well, not really, they're just different. Has this bike got more in common with the Levo than the old SL? Now there's a question. But where you ride, how you ride, who you ride with, if anybody, 
will play a more important part in decision making than anything else. So in that respect, nothing's changed. Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe to EMBN to get lots more e-mounted bike content. But I'm gonna leave you with two thoughts. First one is what's more difficult, climbing or descending? And the second one is for people who are new to e-mountain biking. Welcome, because it's quite a different sport to mountain biking.